Hi everyone, Brian here, and in today's video I plan to go over investment ladders such as certificate of deposits and even treasury ladders. I'm going to try my best to explain why a person would want an investment ladder and how exactly you go about building one. Not only will I speak to the concept of an investment ladder, but I'll walk through the entire process of purchasing a CD ladder from an exchange like Fidelity. Let's begin by explaining what an investment ladder is and why a person would even want one. An investment ladder is where a person invests their money into a guaranteed return on fixed assets like CDs and treasuries. Multiple assets are purchased at the same time where the length of maturity is then staggered over time. And because the assets mature on a staggered cadence, then you'll have access to your principal and your interest on a regular schedule. And I'll provide an example with illustrations in just a minute so it'll become a little bit more clear for you. Typically, the longer the duration an asset has to maturity, then the higher the interest rate tends to be. But a person may not want to tie up all their money into an asset like a CD for up to five years if the rates continue to climb. In using a CD ladder strategy, strategy. Having the assets mature every three months in an environment where the rates are continually climbing, then it's going to be advantageous because you'll have an option to buy a new CD at a higher rate every three months. But of course, that's assuming that the rates continue to climb. But let's say that they don't continue to climb. What if they start to fall? If you expect the rates to fall within a year, then you may also find value in an investment ladder because you're simply parking your cash before you reinvest it back into stocks. If you have every intention of reinvesting your money back into the stock market, then tying up all your funds into a five-year CD would be potentially a bad choice. This is where a ladder strategy may be useful when the rates are planning to go down with the expectation that the markets are going to go up. These happen to be two different ways that you could use an investment ladder depending on what your financial goal is and then adjusting to the changes that you expect in the market and the rates. I have a quick favor to ask of you. If you like my content, I would greatly appreciate it if you press the like button so my channel can grow. And better yet, it would be great if you'd subscribe so you can be up to date with all of my latest content. Now let's get back to illustrate the functionality of a ladder using CDs as my example. Let's say that you have $40,000 that you want to invest in a CD ladder, where you plan to buy four different CDs today at $10,000 each. One with maturity in three months, six months, nine months, and a year. This way, you're gonna have a CD that matures every three months where you can then choose to either cash it out or you can buy another CD with a one-year maturity. And of course, you might be asking, why a one-year maturity? It's because when you buy it for one year, this is going to ensure that it will mature three months after your one-year CD that you had initially purchased. And then at the six-month mark, you can choose to cash out that maturing CD, or you can buy another CD that matures in one year to keep the maturity cadence going for every three months. You then do this exact same thing with the nine-month and the one-year CD that you had originally purchased. This process ensures that you have a guaranteed rate of return for a set time period, where in addition, you're gonna have access to a portion of your cash every three months. Now, I had used CDs as my example, but there's nothing stopping a person from doing this solely with treasuries, bonds, or a mixture of all of these assets, including multi-year guaranteed annuities, or MIGAs, which if you aren't familiar with any of those items, I do have videos that cover those topics. And that is a great segue to show the current rates on each of these type of assets. And please keep in mind the rates are changing daily, and this chart is merely to illustrate how the rates compare to one another. I'll start off with CDs for the three month through five years. As you can see, the rates vary between 4.1 to 5.25%. The next option I'll show are treasuries that range between 4 to 5.11% across most of those time periods. Treasuries are not offered for every time period compared to the CDs, and of course, I have to mention that the key benefit with treasuries is that they are not taxed at the state or the local level. But when it comes to bonds, there are so many different types of bonds ranging from treasuries, municipal and corporate bonds, that I'm not gonna list them in this example because they all tend to mature well beyond five years. But I will say that there is a benefit to municipal bonds that may also be paying at or above 5% and that's that the interest is not taxed at the federal level. And in some cases, if you purchase munis from your local or state area, they're not taxed at the state level either. But you have to check your specific munis in your location to make sure. But getting back to the chart, the last item that I'm gonna show is the multi-year guaranteed annuities, which typically start at three years, and those rates are ranging between five and 5.75%. And an item to be aware of with deferred MIGAs is that the funds compound their interest and grow while deferring your taxes until the interest is withdrawn. But if you happen to be younger than 59 and a half, the IRS has a withdrawal penalty on the interest of 10% with MIGAs. So this item tends to be best if you're in your late 50s or older and you have every intention of only holding it for the short term. 
Now, you can still buy them if you're younger, but your strategy needs to change where you're gonna to wanna to hold it more for the long term because of the penalty. And I do have separate videos covering all of these different assets, but as you can imagine, they are all roughly about the same with a clear winner at each time period. And once you get further out long term, the MIGAs offer higher rates. But as I said earlier, the rates are constantly changing, so please, do not expect to look up these rates today and see exactly what I have on my screen. However, I can save you some time looking up CD rates. I do have a link in the description of a site called Save Better that offers some of the best CD rates that I've ever found. And I will state that they are an affiliate link, but for the past few years where I've been researching CDs constantly, they have consistently been towards the top of that list every time. But I personally believe that a person should always shop around, especially in this ever-changing market. But if stock is your preference, then I also have a link to Robinhood and Webull, where if you sign up for a new account, then you could get up to $3,000 in free stock, where trades are always commission free. And even if the market is down, I do like free stock. Now that I've covered what an investment ladder is, and I've compared all the different rates by time period for fixed assets used in creating those ladders, I'm now gonna go over two different examples on how and why a person may want an investment ladder. In my first example, let's assume it's 2019 where we have Bob and Becky that are married and both 60 years old, and they're both still working full time. Bob and Becky are trying to safeguard their investments outside of their IRAs, and they've started to shift 35% of their portfolio to fixed assets. At that time in 2019, rates on CDs and treasuries were pretty low at around 2.5%, but Bob and Becky don't wanna lock up 35% of their portfolio for several years because the rates may go up. This is a perfect example where it would be advantageous for Bob and Becky to have created a CD ladder with a portion of their investment dollars where the CDs mature every three months, just like my earlier example. This way, when the inflation began to soar in 2021 and the Fed began to increase rates, then Bob and Becky were able to have access to their cash to then buy higher rate CDs. If Bob and Becky would have bought five or 10 year CDs, they would have lost a great deal of money when rates began to go up. This is an example where they created a CD ladder in hopes that the rates would be going up. Now in my second example, let's say that we have John and Sarah that are each 30 years old and married where the year is 2023. They are both maxing out their match 401k contribution, but with the markets being so uncertain, they've decided they wanna put some of their money into safer investments until they feel like it's more obvious that we're not in a recession. John and Sarah don't want their money to be tied up for a long period of time because they believe in the latter part of the year, the rates are gonna to start to fall. In this example, they created a short-term CD ladder expecting that the rates will go down and hopefully the stock market will go up. These examples show two very different age groups with two very different approaches on how to use this strategy. A person could come up with a dozen different examples, but I'm hoping that this covers at least what the majority of you are looking for. I have a separate video here where I walk through the entire process of buying a CD from Capital One, and you can certainly use that as a guide when buying a CD ladder. But the one downside is that their length and maturity are odd timeframes, like 11 months. To get the absolute most out of your CD ladder, you would then need to fund the highest rate per maturity date. But what if you don't wanna go through the work of finding all those banks, setting up an account in each one of them, and then funding each of them separately? Well, this is where an exchange like Fidelity comes in extremely handy because they've taken all the work out of the process. Come on, let's take a look. So I'm on Fidelity, and the first thing I do is I come up to products, fixed income bonds and CDs, I click on that, and it brings me to this screen. And from here, I search for my investments, and it brings me straight to this screen. And from here, I'm gonna click on CDs and ladders. On this screen, there's a lot of information. Down here, it lists each of the CDs and the highest one per time frame. So for right here on the five year, it's got a 5.25% interest CD available, brand new. But for what we're talking about today, we're most interested in this CD ladder section right here. And as you can see, it's broken up into three parts where it's got a one year ladder, a two year ladder, and a five year ladder and it shows that each ladder has four rungs to create the ladder, meaning there is four different CDs that create the ladder. And the best part that I like about this is the ladder APY. So this one is sitting at 4.88%, this one is at 4.94, and this one's at 4.66%. That gives you what the overall ladder APY is. Very important. 
So let's get started on building out our one year CD. And to start with, you're gonna click on this button to build out that one year CD. So on this next screen, it's telling you to fund your CD ladder. And it's telling us that the minimum is $4,000. The reason why it's $4,000 is because each CD costs a minimum of $1,000. And because the rungs are four in a CD ladder, Therefore, it's $4,000. And if you want to add money to it, it has to be in increments of $4,000 because there's four rungs in the ladder and they have to be equal portions. So for this example, let's go ahead and type in $8,000. Once I put in my amount, it then brings me to this next screen where it's essentially asking me, do I want it to auto enroll once everything matures? The first option is to return the maturing principal to my core account. If you select that option, as soon as they mature, it's just gonna put it straight into your Fidelity account where you have access to all of that cash. But if you choose the next option down below, what it's going to do is as your CDs mature, it's going to auto enroll them into the next set of CDs. And in that case, when the three month matures, it then buys a 12 month CD, just like what it's showing there. That way, every three month cadence, you're still gonna have access to all of that principal. For today's example, I'm going to choose to have everything returned to my account because I'm not sure if I wanna have it keep auto enrolling, I'll make that decision when the time comes. So I'm gonna choose this top option, and then it brings us to this screen, and there's a lot of information going on. This left-hand section right over here, most of it is blocked out. You can't really make any changes to it, but as you can see, it has it excluding callable CDs. And I talk about callable CDs in my other videos, and essentially if it's callable, a bank at any time could say, hey, we're calling back that CD before its maturity date, we're gonna pay you the principal back and whatever interest is that you've earned to date. It may have six months, 10 months, 12 months left to maturity, it doesn't matter. The bank could choose to call it back. But in this case, it's a good thing that it excludes all callable CDs because we don't want callable CDs in this process. Now, when it comes to this portion right here, this is really the meat and potatoes of everything that you're looking at with your CD ladder. It lists out each of the four CDs that you're going to be purchasing and it lists what the rates are gonna be for each of them at 4.75, 4.9, 4.85, and then 5%. If you don't like the option of the banks that it offers here, you can choose other available CDs. And if you click on that button, it brings all the other CDs and you could click a button and see replace it. But the thing is, this one has the highest rate. It's FDIC insured. It meets all of my needs. Now, something that I would personally do on each one of these banks is that I would click on this link to see the specific details of those banks. I'm not gonna cover too much of that today because I have a dedicated video on brokered CDs and how to buy them from a site like Fidelity where I go over all of those details, but I'm gonna click on it and show you what it says. So it shows you a lot of the pertinent details about the CD as well as the performance of the CD. I review all of those details to make sure that it meets all of my needs. Once you verify the details of the CDs and the banks that are offering them, really, you just click on the continue. And when you hit continue, it takes you to another screen. And from there, you verify the details and you hit execute. Once you hit execute, it then sends you a confirmation of all of the details of your purchase. That's it. That is how easy it is to buy a CD ladder on something like Fidelity. As I mentioned before, you can certainly do it at specific banks and you could potentially get much higher rates, but it's a lot to juggle if you have to get it at separate banks to get those higher rates. So it's kind of a balancing act as far as what's more important to you having the ease of access of everything being in one spot, or do you wanna build it out separately? A person really needs to weigh their options as far as do they want higher rates or do they want simplicity? Everyone's journey is a little bit different. What's right for me might be very different for someone else. I just wanna give options so everyone knows what they're looking for. And that concludes my video on how to create investment ladders. I hope you were able to get some value out of today's video and thanks for watching.